Thank you, Elois, and uh, want to welcome everyone to this ACRL Presents webcast, uh, which will focus on ACRL's consulting services. Um, I'm Karen Brown, and I manage ACRL Consulting Services, and I will be moderating this webcast and will be joined by five presenters. Before I introduce them, though, let me give you just a snapshot of what we're going to be covering in the webcast. First of all, we're gonna talk about the origins of ACRL Consulting Services and how it fits into the role and mission of the association. You'll also learn about different types of services provided and to gain a better understanding of what these services actually look like in action, you'll have an opportunity to hear from librarians who have used some of these services to inform and influence their library's practices and functions as well as you're going to hear a perspective from one of ACRL's adjunct consultants who has facilitated numerous library staff events and retreats. Finally, we want to make sure and leave time for your questions. Let me now introduce the other five presenters who I'm very fortunate to have joining me today. Uh, first of all, uh, Catherine Dice is one of ACRL's senior adjunct consultants and has worked with dozens of academic libraries over the past several years. You may also know her as the former content strategist for ACRL. Juliet Gray is Interim Assistant Dean at the Lovejoy Library at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. And Lydia Jackson is the Interim Director, er, I'm sorry, Interim Dean at the Lovejoy Library. Kara Melifont is ACRL Senior Strategist for Special Initiatives and works closely with consulting services. April Shepard is Assistant Library Director at the Dean B. Ellis Library at Arkansas State University. Uh, in addition to managing ACRL Consulting Services, I'm also on the faculty of Dominican University School of Information Studies. So, how did ACR Consulting Services come about? And Kara is the person who can provide that background information. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mic over to her, Kara. Great, thanks Karen. Um, we started offering consulting services here at ACRL more than a decade ago, believing that it was really important for your national association to provide services that support academic libraries in thinking strategically um, so that all of our libraries can adapt and grow as the higher education environment changes. And this work really ties very directly to ACRL strategic plan, which has four goals. One of those goals is around new roles and changing landscapes. And it says that the academic and research library workforce effectively fosters change in academic libraries and higher education environments. One of the objectives is that ACRL will equip the academic library workforce to effectively lead, manage, and embrace change, advocate for their communities, and serve as a catalyst for transformational change in higher education. So you can see kind of the intention of the association overall is to really be there as a resource to all of you. Um, and one way of helping our broader community with change, um, we started offering consulting services in 2007. My colleague Catherine Dice, who you're going to hear from later, really deserves credit for getting ACRL started on this path when she was here on staff, and we're really lucky to have her with us here today. In the 12 years since we've had ACRL Consulting, uh, we've served over 50 clients from community colleges to private liberal arts colleges to public regional master's comprehensive universities like the two we've got here with us today. Actually, I think you both have doctorates, so you're bigger than just master's comprehensive. And then we've even served a couple of large research universities as well. We've worked with consortia, with other library associations. We've traveled from coast to coast, from California to Massachusetts, everywhere in between, and even um, outside the US as well. So I'm going to hand the mic back over to Karen to talk specifically about some of the kinds of services we offer. Um, but, you know, in my experience uh, doing some of the consulting myself, I find it incredibly rewarding to um, get out of the office and actually find out what is really happening in libraries today and to see how some of the things we think about and talk about, some of the books and articles that are being written, um, how it plays out in the field and what some of the um, challenges and some of the really fantastic opportunities that libraries have to be real leaders in higher education. 
Okay. Thank you, Kara. Um, so ACRL offers a variety of consulting services that can be really loosely organized into four categories, broad categories, library reviews, planning, campus collaborations, and organization development and effectiveness. Now I'm gonna describe each of these um, briefly, but it's important to keep in mind that whenever we work with an institution, we work closely with the staff to make sure that we are really customizing the services in a way that are meaningful and effective. And we have a team of experienced expert consultant practitioners who we work with to make sure we're, we're getting a good match to an institution's needs. So for library reviews and self-studies, it's not unusual for a college or university to contact us and request an external library review of the library services, programs, collections, staffing levels, and general operations. It may be that a longtime library dean or director recently retired or left for another position, and the library staff and the institution's administration really wants to get a clear picture of the current kind of state of the library, so to speak. Or it might be that a library is ready to embark on strategic planning process and needs a kind of a baseline understanding of the services, collections, and operations. For an external library review, two ACRL consultants are involved in studying background information about the library and then conduct a one-day on-site visit that involves interviews with library staff and campus stakeholders, such as faculty, students, academic enrichment unit staff, uh, campus academic administrators, really zeroing in on getting a full picture of the library and its kind of presence on the campus. Typically, we also prepare benchmarking comparisons against peer and or aspirin institutions on key data points. Uh, the consultants then prepare, it's usually about a 15 to 20 page report using the ACRL standards for libraries and higher education as a framework and noting areas of strength, areas for growth and improvement and specific recommendations. There are also times though that a library needs to prepare an internal self-study as part of its uh, institution's program review process or for accreditation. And ACRL can review a library's uh, final report just before its submission um, to provide kind of feedback and recommendations about such aspects of, uh, as such aspects as its use of appropriate standards or implementation and use of assessment and performance measures and uh, understanding, does the report give an understanding of the library's contributions to the institution's mission and priorities? Now, since library reviews and self-studies are such a central activity for most academic libraries, I want to point out an excellent source for learning more about library reviews and self-studies. It's Reviewing the Academic Library, A Guide to Self-Study and External Review, and it's edited by Eleanor Mitchell and Pegan Seiden, and it's an ACRL publication, and there's actually a chapter in there uh, by Kara and Catherine about um, external library reviews that you can access on the ACL website. I'll show you in just a moment where that is. Um, ACRL also frequently works with libraries to design and facilitate strategic planning events, such as an all staff day long retreat that focuses on strategic thinking and innovation to kick off a planning process. Uh, we plan these uh, retreats and events to be highly participatory and provide opportunities for all staff to contribute to an initial planning process. And usually by the end of the retreat day, again, depending on the particular situation, but usually a library's identified specific strengths and opportunities for moving forward and crafted a set of key strategic directions that can then be further developed and fine-tuned by a planning uh, team or task force. Again, any strategic thinking and planning event would be designed in close uh, collaboration with key library staff and or a planning team to be sure that the activities and outcomes 
match what the needs are. Um, and depending on the number of participants at, let's say, a planning retreat, one or two consultants may be involved. There are times when a library needs input from campus constituent groups, maybe for planning purposes or for preparing for a dean or director library search, or to really gain a, a deeper understanding of campus perspectives, uh, desired services, resources, or pri priorities related to a specific issue. And ACRL can work with a library to design a process for gathering input. Uh, typically, this might involve focus groups or interviews or roundtable discussions. Uh, the consultant then prepares a three to five page summary report that identifies key themes that emerge during the information gathering. Organization effectiveness and development is another area of focus for consulting services. What library isn't dealing with change or how best to lead and manage change as an organization, uh, particularly when you think about staff roles and responsibilities changing and evolving to meet new needs and priorities, or a library might be looking for assistance with developing its leadership capacity. Um, as you'll hear from Catherine shortly, ACRL Consulting Services has worked with numerous libraries to help design and facilitate initiatives, strategy sessions all around kind of more internal organizational effectiveness and development. Now, rather than having me go on and on describing various consulting services, it's likely to be most helpful to actually hear from librarians who have used consulting services in different ways. So first we're gonna hear from Lydia Jackson and Juliet Gray about strategic planning that occurred at the University of Southern Illinois, Edwardsville. So Juliet and Lydia, if you wanna unmute your mics, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Good morning, this is Lydia Jackson. Uh, First slide, please, Karen. Next slide. So I just first want to give you a little background information about uh, the demographics at SIUE. Uh, you can see it on screen. We're a short distance from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we, we're, we're both a current uh, doctoral and professional school uh, under the Carnegie classification. And you can see all of the schools that uh, we provide uh, educational backgrounds too. We give bat bachelorettes, graduate doctoral, and PhD uh, degrees. Uh, there's approximately 13,000 students. They're traditional, commuter, and non-traditional. Next slide, please. Uh, in 2017, we experienced a uh, a change in leadership. Our dean retired, and uh, prior to her retiring, the library really was under a hierarchy system where there was really no collaboration. Uh, and so with there not being collaboration, when she retired, both the faculty and the staff uh, wanted to make a change, and, and so did administration wanted us to, to change more. And so what we did, um, we now work under a more collaborative environment where the faculty really are involved in the governance of the library. Uh, we had a number of faculty vacancies. As a matter of fact, over half of our faculty positions were vacant at the time. Uh, we had a heavy reliance on uh, there being staff and student assistance and grad assistance. And so in uh, my taking the position as the interim dean, the first thing uh, I saw when talking to the leadership uh, of the university is to say that this library really needed to undergo um, a overall review of our entire processes. And what we did was we reviewed, we looked at a number of institutions consulting services, and we decided uh, to choose our own accreditation body, ACRL, uh, affiliated with ALA, uh, to do some consulting. We needed an objective review of the library, not just in-house, but just to have someone come in. The university supported this ideal. Not only did they support it, but they also gave us funding for both an external review, a retreat. Uh, and so we, we chose ACRL because they specifically worked with academic libraries. Next slide, please. 
So after numerous consultations with uh, ACRL, we uh, were asked to provide information to them. We provided documentation such as our budget, our annual reports. We provided our strategic plan. We gave them a list of all faculty and staff and their roles within the library. And we also gave them our present organizational structure as well as our aspirational organizational structure, how we wanted to change. And that involved uh, not only the faculty being involved in those discussions, staff were involved as well. Next slide, please. Uh, as we uh, gathered the documentation and provided that to ACRL, the ACRL team, uh, both Karen and uh, Karen and Catherine met with, uh, I'm sorry, first they met with myself as the interim dean and spoke with the provost. They came for a visit to, to view our library and to have just a general discussion. We did that and we decided upon uh, their meeting um, having their initial meetings with focus groups. Uh, we've, we have focus groups of library faculty, library staff, we had university-wide faculty, we had, we had a focus group of the university deans and administration, a focus group of the students, as well as our friends of Love Drill Library. Uh, all of those groups had, had active participation uh, in the process. In reviewing the ACRL report, uh, once that, that report was summarized, it was provided to the provost and the chancellor and myself. It was shared with all of the faculty and all of the staff as well, the entire report. We were not able to share the report, however, with our uh, university partners as a whole, uh, nor were we able to provide a summary campus-wide. And that was done for the reasoning of the uh, budgetary matters and there were a number of things in the in our report that demonstrated that that first of all we needed more faculty we needed more staff we needed our collections uh, enhanced and all of those matters were um, matters that also needed to be addressed through our university leadership and that is being done now um, we also had a uh, as all staff retreat. Now we had met as as faculty and staff, both the faculty by themselves and the staff by themselves with the dean to discuss the report. The report, but we also had a collaborative meeting where we jointly met. And after that, we had an all staff retreat uh, last summer. Um, that ACRL uh, consultants Karen and Catherine came to campus and all of us met and there were group activities. Uh, we looked at our aspiration, we looked at opportunities, we looked at strengths and that in turn uh, led us to come up with some specific strategic directions that the library would take. Next slide please. And so now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague uh, Juliet Gray and she'll talk about the the strategic plan that we're, we're undertaking now. Thank you, Lydia. Um, okay, so. Juliet, I think you need to unmute your mic. Can you hear me? Okay, sorry about that. Um, so we, we began meeting um, shortly after the retreat. Uh, the strategic planning working group and Karen and Catherine um, at ACRL helped uh, the dean and I strategize about how to form the group and who should be in it and also provided a lot of guidance on how to structure the meetings so that the goal of drafting a new strategic plan could be achieved within the time frame that we were given. Um, we needed to have something um, available to the provost by December of 2018 and so we began meeting in August 2018 shortly after our retreat and we uh, completed our work by December so we were on task and I was very happy about that um, um, they also provided ACRL also provided regular op opportunities uh, during this process for feedback um, um, as we talked about what we were doing I was able to be in contact with Karen and Catherine and, and ask some questions and that was very helpful um, we drafted a new mission and vision statement. Um, we drafted a strategic plan through this group. 
Um, we shared the plan with everybody in Library and Information Services to get feedback. We shared the plan externally with the, the whole SIUE community, and we made revisions on um, the mission and vision and the strategic plan based on the feedback that we were receiving. Um, next slide, slide please. Um, so our strategic plan is, is short, 2019 to 2021, and, and we have a, a lot of things we want to achieve in, in the next two years. Um, and as you can see, we re redrafted our mission and vision. That was sort of how we started. Um, and we wanted those statements to be written in active voice and reflect the ideals that were already pres present in the university these mission and vision and so we we made sure that ours were aligned with the universities um, so you can see we use language like library and information services is and, and LIS will empower and we will shape a changing world so we were we were encouraged by the work that we did during that um, retreat and the conversations we had with ACRL to sort of really rethink how we wanted to present our mission and vision next slide please and as you can see here, we came up with six main strategic directions. Uh, one important takeaway from our work with uh, the consultants was their emphasis on crafting a strategic plan that was creative and unique to us. Um, they encouraged us to look at our community and our, our library and, and, and craft something unique. And so we came up with six strategic directions that were based on a lot of the conversation that occurred during the, the all-day retreat in the summer and also based on the report that we received from ACRL after the external review. And so our, our six strategic directions are here, teach, learn, empower, design, enhance, engage. And I took these little snapshots from our strategic plan because I wanted to show that we decided to sort of design it like um, a dictionary entry and we put in the phonetic spelling and then we gave a really brief, powerful, um, definition of each of these strategic directions. So that was our way of being unique. <laughs> Next slide, please. So just uh, one quick example from the strategic plan, and this is from the, the direction teach. One of our, uh, I think this is our first objective, teach SIUE students to become information literate using the ACRL framework. This is something that we weren't doing. Uh, we're, we're definitely behind um, a lot of other libraries that have, have employed the framework. Um, and so we really wanted to make this our very first bold statement under teach. And then you can see underneath teach are the uh, action items that we are hoping to achieve, we plan to achieve by 2021. Next slide, please. Um, prior to implementation, um, through conversations between Dean Jackson and I, we realized that we really did need to review all of our staff position descriptions um, in, in order to really uh, achieve the objectives of our strategic plan. And so we are currently in the process of re reviewing and rewriting all of those position descriptions. Um, and transitioning to a new organizational structure that will best support the, the, the strategic directions that we developed for that plan. Um, implementing the strategic plan, this is sort of where we are now, we're in the thick of it, and um, we developed a planning document um, in, in, using Excel that, that lists all of our objectives and action items along with dates for implementation and um, dates for reviewing our, our progress. And uh, we're, we'll be establishing six teams, one, uh, one for each of the six strategic directions, which will be composed of members from both the LIS faculty and the LIS staff. And those teams are going to be responsible for assisting with collecting data and establishing benchmarks and I've been in contact with with Karen already about um, um, best practices for that best practices for marketing and so I, I, I anticipate getting more help as well from ACRL as we move into the implementation and marketing phases and of course assessment 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 that's definitely what we'll be doing uh, a lot of over the next few months next slide and oh you want, okay, and then um, and then marketing the plan. Um, we did, we formed a, a marketing committee that is going to work with our university marketing on a strategy for publishing the uh, plan and um, uh, both in print and electronic format and um, help with the the 
the marketing piece of this, but uh, I just always want to, I want to end by saying um, that we understand that marketing really has to come through communicating the value of a library, which is a direct result of being able to to show the ways in which we we have achieved the objectives that were laid out in in the plan itself and so that's sort of that's happening now and in the future and i think lydia had did you want to say no okay all right and that's all thank you yeah. thank you very much lydia and juliet um arkansas state university uh, also embarked on a planning process after ACRL conducted an external library review and April is going to tell us about her library's experience. I am, but I'm going to request um, control because I like to drive my own PowerPoints. <laughs> so I'm going to request that. Um, so yeah, we, it's pretty funny because I had a talk with Lydia and Julia before, but it's interesting how much our reasons for doing the consultation and what happened during and after really matches. We were in a really similar spot with vacancies and leadership issues. So we had our consultants come in in February 2017. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about how we're using that report and using the standards for libraries and edu education, um, using those standards to kind of lead our change of planning in our library. Oh, is it letting me drive it? I can't drive, so next slide. Yeah, if you, if you hover your mouse over the slide itself, you should then be able to hit the forward key on your computer and it should move it forward. It's not. Because it, I just gave it, let's see. Well, you can take it back and I'll just tell okay. you. Okay. All right, so we got our report and total, it was 40 pages and that includes all the appendices and the reports and we got uh, feedback from the groups. Um, so when they came in and they talked with faculty, what did the faculty say? What did the students say? But I'll admit 40 pages is really intimidating when you first hold it in your hand, but you read through it, you take time to digest it. And we got um, looked at seven different standards and you can see the standards there. So there's nine standards. They looked at seven of them for us. And each section was broken into the overview. This is what your library does. This is what the standard is. And then there'd be a section on how we're really good at that standard, our strengths, and then our areas for growth. Next slide. So what do you do with it? Um, I think a lot of people, when they get a report, they just throw it on the shelf. At least on my campus, that's the way we've been doing it for years. We get an assessment, goes on their shelf. Strategic plan goes on the shelf. We didn't want to do that. So we really wanted to be proactive we you know we wanted to do something we wanted to make this matter so the first thing we did was we created this maximizing library personnel time task force and i'll admit i did not name this one this way too wordy for me but what it is is we took 10 library personnel and we made sure it was a mixture of librarians and classified staff different areas different departments we really wanted that mixture of expertise and then our senior associate vice chancellor for academic affairs she joined us. We ran a little under two months and our task was looking at efficiencies because one thing that we got in our report was why are you doing this? Why are you doing this task instead of this task? And a lot of this is not effective. This is, you know, that standard of institutional effectiveness. Is this really effective? Is this helping your role here? Is this helping this standard? So we were looking at the report um, and you do have to look at it, digest it. Some things were wrong. And we also had to think, why did we give that wrong impression? Why was it wrong? And some of it is we weren't communicating. That said a lot to ourselves too. So next slide. So one of the suggestions we got was reducing librarians serving at the reference desk. We had already started pulling back, but we hadn't gone all the way. We hadn't fully committed. And we looked at this one, we thought, you know, this makes sense. Again, you always have to weigh it for your campus, your library. Next slide. So we implemented this one. So we did increase training for staff and students. Um, we were just at a conference Friday and they were very surprised that we put our student workers through the exact same training we put our desk personnel through. Um, 
We increase them at the, the roles at the desk. We are increasing um, the duties of staff. They're starting to do tours and um, general BIs, things like that. Next slide. So why is, is this good? Well, the students are happier. The student workers are happier. They feel valued by us and the staff also, you know, they feel valued. They feel like they're more uh, contributing to the library as a whole. And this is allowing our librarians to focus on things that fit that standard of educational role. Because, you know, we kept seeing, okay, if the librarians at the desk, what are they not doing? So in this case, we needed to do other things to fill our role. Next slide. So through that month and a half, two month time period, we actually figured out about 15 inefficient procedures. And we saved, we estimate about 80 hours a week. And we've had some vacancies in our library. We've lost a few positions in the last few years. We have some frozen positions through retirement. 80 hours is a really major deal to us. So this, this really was important for us to do. And so our phase two is we created this library planning committee. It's still going on. It's made up of 10 library personnel, some of them from the Maximizing Time Task Force, some new people. We rotate membership in and out. We try to be fair uh, to make sure everyone has the opportunity to first have a voice. But we also want people to see this kind of administrative, logical side of the decisions we make that there's this process why we make these decisions. And then, oh, you went too fast on me. <laughs> That's okay. So we had three areas, strategic direction, library organization, and then service and outreach. So we look at all of these. Now you can go. So we're in a weird situation. We've had um, some change in campus leadership. Uh, we had a chancellor, he didn't stay very long. We have a new chancellor. We are getting a brand new provost. So we're in this weird flux that we don't have a campus strategic plan. And it's hard to decide what we're going to do without that. So we really needed some guiding vision from the library. We also looked at the consultants report because again, we saw some patterns, some things that kind of came up over and over and that said, okay, this really is something we need to adjust. And we were looking at that. But as uh, Lydia and Juliet were saying, you have to make it work for your library, your community. So we were already looking at our self-identified weaknesses. And there were a lot of suggestions, let's say maybe 80% in the report, that were things that we had already identified. We knew those were our areas of weaknesses. We were already working on them. A few of them we had already corrected by the time we got our report. So what we ended up with was two focuses for us. Next slide. Um, digitization and access. So our campus is about 34% online students. That's really large, especially for a school of our size. And we were doing okay providing services for them, but we weren't doing the best. So we knew this was an area of weakness. We got things pretty good throughout the report with that, and we knew it. And you could see how digitization and access, it fits into these standards of collections, discovery, educational role, effectiveness, personnel, you know, we keep coming back and touching all these standards. And the next thing we did, next slide, was looked at our organization. Again, we're in that flux. We had some vacancies, including administration. Um, we, you know, we have this new strategic direction. How are we going to do this? So the first step is we mapped up all major library flows. So we had this two day event where we went beginning to end, what happens when a faculty member requests a book all the way through to the book getting on the shelf? What happens when someone does an interlibrary loan beginning to end? And we found a lot of bottlenecks and this allowed us to even tighten up and solve some efficiencies again. And it also kind of let us say, okay, why is it going to this person? Why is this not person doing that? We found some tasks that were bouncing between departments that didn't make since so that was that you know that institutional effectiveness we weren't being very effective and then as we were looking at this we decided that we really needed to look at our organizational structure you can go on so this is what we looked at in 2016 i think it's a pretty standard um, library organization i don't think there's anything earth shocking there you can go next here's our process we had a uh, 
We locked ourselves up in a room for a few days. This is us working on the new organization. To the left, we have our strategic directions to keep us reminded. We have some notes there. We have these huge post-it notes and we pasted and moved and wrote and moved. So this was a very intense process for us. Next slide. So in addition to the new structure, it's like, you know, we really need to look at our department names and job titles. We're just, we're just looking at everything. And we even did our position descriptions too. We did everything. Next. So before acquisitions, reference, systems, I think those are pretty standard um, titles. But what do these names mean to anyone outside of the library? And we really started thinking this in a weird way is discovery because people couldn't find us. They didn't know who to call. And when we were looking at other libraries at their organizational structures, we wasn't always clear who did what job. So this is that personnel and that effectiveness. So we, we renamed everything. Next slide. So now acquisitions, collection management. Reference is now research and educational support because we know what reference means, but we were finding that a lot of our faculty really didn't get what reference did. They had a antiquated version of reference. Now research and educational support because we were running into, oh, I didn't know the library could help me with my class. Well, now we're educational support. Yeah, we help you. Systems is library technology. And then we also looked at job titles. So we have a government documents librarian, an outreach librarian that tells you a little bit about something what they do, especially if you work in a library. Again, doesn't mean much to people outside. And this academic technician doesn't mean anything really to anyone. So next, so you can see, here's our new titles, government information. You know, I used to be a government documents librarian. No one knows what documents means unless you work directly with the documents librarian. But government information tells you something, it's descriptive. Student engagement and outreach, ah, that's what she's doing, that's her job. And our academic tech, he's actually our EV tech, he's the guy who closes the library. So now you're kind of helping our roles, it's helping us be discovered, it helps people know what we're doing. Next, here's our, here's my really bad sloppy handwriting, but you can kind of see how we work through these documents, how we were assigning tasks, you can see we were crossing things out, trying to come up with titles, we went back and forth. And then we were also, once we figured out what department was responsible for each task, how many people did it take to do each to do those tasks. So in collection management, we have one librarian, one full time person, one part time person and 30 hours of student help. So it went back and forth. Of, and this is what we look like today. It's much cleaner. Uh, it's a lot easier for us to work together. It's a lot more collaborative. We know who does what. You notice um, we have tasks under each department now. That kind of helps us keep on track. It helps us, you know, again, tie into those standards, making sure we're being effective, making sure everyone's fulfilling the role. And there's only, I think, 31 of us. So we didn't need four tiers of, you know, organization structure. This is really a lot more effective for us. Next slide. So today, the library planning group is still meeting. We are currently um, doing a little bit of changing of our structure. We, we got three people who asked to be off or inviting three people. Again, we're trying to keep different ideas. We're doing a one-year evaluation of our structure. Um, we also made some changes with some of our outreach. We're looking at our outreach activities. Do we, did we make the right choice, which activities to stop, which ones to do? And every discussion we have goes back to our guiding visions, our strategic directions, our digitization and access, and then our standards for um, libraries and higher education. So we have a, we know we have a retirement in January. What are we going to do with this retirement? How are we going to fill it? Where does it fit into all these different roles? How do we justify it for our directions? How does we fit into our standards? Again, we're looking at some of our outreach. Are we going to do this again? Are we not going to do this again? What do we give up? What are our standards? So we're constantly going back to that. And there I am. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, April. Um, as I mentioned earlier, 
Uh, ACERA also works with libraries to build their organizational capacity and effectiveness. And since 2010 in her role with ACRL, Catherine has worked with many, many academic libraries on a variety of different types of organizational development activities and initiatives. And she's going to talk about a few of these. So Catherine, if you're ready, we'll go ahead. Uh, Catherine, you need to unmute your mic. Sorry. Um, before I, I jump into uh, the types of, of organizational development activities that, that we've seen and been part of at ACRO Consulting Services, I'd like to talk a little bit about the underlying philosophy that guides some of these activities because I think that's a very important um, piece and, and I think was implicit in some of the things that um, Juliet and Lydia and April have talked about um, in terms of their work with us. Uh, it may not have been particularly obvious to uh, listeners, so I, I'd like to say something about that. The first thing is that ACRL Consulting Services focus, focuses on expressed needs, the client's expressed needs, and we work uh, carefully through conversations, multiple conversations, to really understand what's driving the request that that ACRL Consulting Services is receiving. And um, aside from that, uh, we then, so we see that the relationship is a collaborative relationship and a helping relationship. And thus, it is not a prescriptive relationship. And even though we might, for instance, in, a, in, in program review, uh, in, a, in an external review, there might be recommendations. They're still not prescriptive. Um, it's still up to the client, of course. But in organizational development in particular, often we find that people sort of want, um, want us to give them the answer. And we really believe that people will commit to that which they create themselves and that they actually know deep down inside somehow or other with some guidance, they'll, they'll, they'll know what is the right thing to do. So we tend to think of, of our work in organizational effectiveness and development as a helping relationship, a collaborative relationship, and um, so, some of the th so that's the underlying piece I wanted to make sure people understood uh, as a philosophy. Uh, much of the work we do in, in this arena has been around leadership. Uh, while we believe leadership uh, leaders are, are required throughout the organization and leadership exists throughout the organization at all levels, uh, we are often asked to work with leadership teams, either new departments that have been formed um, in, in a new structure or uh, to do a retreat for just that new department to get them rolling and get them um, sort of talking about what their priorities or um, the top leadership teams in the organization, if you have a hierarchy, which most academic libraries have of one kind or another, um, working with that leadership team to develop uh, cohesiveness in, in their way of working together, or to just start to give get that team uh, an infusion of fresh energy and um, revisit some ideas, uh, guiding ideas, so that that's, they're not just in putting out fire mode, but that are actually have a chance to step back, spend a day or even two days um, thinking about the whole organization and thinking about what they'd like to do um, in the future and including how they will relate to one another. And that's a pretty important piece of this. Um, so, so these leadership retreats can be at either at the departmental level or at the full organizational level. Sometimes they're managerial in, in nature. Sometimes they're more, much more leadership in nature. Um, but all of these are, are end up being uh, very developmental. And by that, I mean that even though the, the intention of the, of the client and uh, of, of us as consultants is, please come in and facilitate our conversations around X, um, that that's the agreed upon work. What we often have found is that in the process of, of having a retreat like that, um, those clients draw on our knowledge for their own development. So we end up providing more content than we might in, in other types of consulting, um, providing resources, providing models, and helping people um, see what they're saying to each other. So that's part of the facilitative process that we um, embrace. 
um, we we see this developmental work often in in the things that Lydia and uh, Juliet were talking about in terms of guiding uh, planning teams. When we're facilitating the work of a planning team or getting a, a planning team rolling, we're often our role is, you know, just let's do a kickoff of the planning team. So can you come in and facilitate that? So we do, but in the process of doing that, we're actually also in a teaching role and in a developmental role for them. And we hear from clients over and over again that that developmental role that comes out of a non-developmental request uh, is it ha turns out to be one of the most valuable things that they uh, that they get from consulting services. So that that's that's um, an angle that often people don't think about uh, when they're asking for help. They're thinking about the immediate um, event that they want facilitated or um, guidance on. But what what often isn't clear to them and even to us in the moment is this is going to end up being developmental at some point or another it might. And that's when you want people who have deep um, content knowledge and, and resources to bring um, and, and context uh, of the academic world and the higher ed world. Um, we have actually done work with um, higher level um, uh, institutional leadership and including the the library dean and provost conversations with those uh, folks to help them uh, work together better. So facilitation comes in many forms. It can be a one-day retreat. It can be a two-day retreat. It can be um, one day separated um, uh, three three events separated by a few months in between so that people can work on developing their skills and or creating plans and new agreements and so on, commitments within their own groups. So our role is really a facilitative role, a helping role, and very much so a developmental role, not a prescriptive role. So when we uh, provide resources and models and so on, we're providing them a, um, in, a, in a sense as a basis for conversation which will reveal to the client group their, each of their in, uh, understandings of the organization and what they'd like to do in the future and so on. Um, I think I'll stop there. Um, Kara, do you have anything, or Karen, do you have anything to add to that, what, to what I've said? No, I think you said it beautifully, Kathy. Yes, and, and thank you for uh, talking a little bit more about the more developmental process and how that unfolds when working with a uh, library or institution. So we have given you lots of information, I'm sure, to think about. I want to point out, um, before we open it up for questions, um, when you go to the ACRL website, uh, there is the link for professional tools and one of, from the drop down menu, one of the tabs is consulting services. So you can find out much more uh, additional types of services, um, fee structure, uh, and additional information. If you do have questions or want to hear a little bit more about some of the specific services, feel free to contact me. My email is there, karenbrownacrl at gmail.com, or also Kara Melenfont at ALA. Uh, you can contact either of us and answer questions. But let me uh, pause at this point and if you have a question, please uh, go ahead and type it in the chat box and we will uh, respond. Any questions? You can also ask questions specifically to either April and um, Lydia or Juliet about their process. Uh, can anyone address space consulting uh, services? Um, I'm going to answer that briefly and then uh, Kara, if you want to maybe also uh, chime in. Uh, part of the standards for libraries in higher ed does involve um, one of one of the primary areas is uh, use of space. 
um, and how it contributes to the library role and mission, but specifically uh, doing space consulting that gets a little bit out of what we would normally focus on and we could maybe refer you to, uh, to others. Kara, do you want to add in? Yeah, you know, we have, um, there are groups who do just space planning, and that's not our expertise. We don't have that deep background knowledge that an architect would have, for example. But we have done some work um, in, at an institution where, for example, they knew that they were going to be undergoing some space planning. They knew that there was um, funding available, um, and they just needed to really get things going at a very basic level and sort of raise awareness in their community. So we did a series of roundtables where we had um, members of the community come in and start the, the imagining process, start, um, start understanding what the range of possibilities would be and what they sort of saw as some of their very initial desires. And so that was one small piece then that fed into a much larger space planning um, process that they were undergoing. There, one resource among many you could turn to. There is a joint uh, divisional, interdivisional task force between LAMA and ACRL, and there's a space planning guide online. It's a live guide, and um, there are a lot of resources there you could look at, but we can also give you some other recommendations if you want to get in touch. Thank you. Other questions, comments? I'll throw one out for either April or um, Juliet and Lydia uh, while we're waiting to see if anyone else comes up in the chat is um, about what it what it was like for you um, since you both had external reviews. Um, you know, we know that sometimes having somebody in from the outside to like poke around and ask a lot of questions can cause anxiety. So what kinds of things um, would you recommend to people um, in terms of helping library faculty and staff, you know, feel prepared for that kind of an experience. Um, you know, for us, I'll admit there was some resistance at first in our library. Um, we were really successful. It wasn't like we were in this dire situation and we needed to save. Uh, we were growing our first our instruction program. We were having a lot of success across campus. And so our first initial reaction was, well, we don't need anyone telling us what to do our job. We know what we're doing. And so you have to kind of take the eagle to the side. You have to mm -hmm. say, you know, it's not telling you how to do your job. And a lot of what we found gave us justification for what mm -hmm. we were doing. Because mm -hmm. like, yeah, you're doing this and you should be doing this. This is really great that you're doing it. And there were some things that we had told the consultants when they came in that we really wish we could do. And they're like, no, you should totally be doing that. And that gave us a little bit of extra power when we were going in with these proposals with things that we wanted to do because now we're like hey look acrl the experts they agree with us so it gave us a little bit more buy-in from people outside the library and that helped too and some of it was just kind of nice to say yeah you guys are on the right track or yeah you know the things you've been complaining about that you need to do better on is totally the areas you need to do better on so i think it helped focus us that you know it was kind of reassuring actually when we got the report and after we digested it that a lot of the stuff just reaffirmed what we were already thinking and that really helped at least for me i really appreciated that so yeah you got to put the eagle to the side <laughs> this is lydia uh, i i agree with what april said uh it did help to reaffirm i think we were in a different uh position though we really knew in our library that we needed to change to, to be a 21st century library, number one. And uh, number two, we had had so many, as I said, it was a hierarchical system here. And so we needed to change that. And I think uh, overall the faculty and the staff were open uh, initially to us uh, having the external review. That was one of the first, we also had uh, on campus had uh, our School of Education do a morale survey for us to, to even talk about the climate of the library and how we were feeling because as I, when I came in as interim dean, I knew that was an issue. And so we had that which supported my being able to go to the, to the provost and say, we need an objective body to look at the library overall. We know some of these things and we had 
we had addressed them as much as we could in-house, but we needed an external review to not only document what we were doing, but what our peers were doing and saying, you know, and saying, and, and definitely um, we, we used that as leverage for more staffing and budget. Uh, and so uh, it, it was really important. It was really uh, invigorating to have the consultants come in and really, you know, help us facilitate these discussions in a more open form. Um, so that's what I appreciated most. Juliet? I'll just add. Um, I think I'll just add that, um, that I, I think that the process of being introspective about what we do here in the library, um, even though it's it sort of has been tough at times um, when you can always just go back to that report. You know, you can always just go back to that report when you're trying to talk about a change and say, you know, ACRL recognize that we, you know, our collection is very dated. And I think just being able to go back to something that is objective, that comes from, um, you know, a, 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 a an organization that sets the standards for our profession, it just is helping to professionalize our changes. And um, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's helpful. Any other questions or from panelists who want to ask other panelists questions? Uh, but we are just about at the top of, of the hour. So we'll maybe wait just a few, uh, another 30 seconds or so, see if there are any questions. Um, and if not, we will uh, call it a day. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the recording will be sent to um, all participants, right? Uh, by Elois? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. I, I'd like to say, you know, I, I well, maybe speaking for Kara and Karen uh, and re-emphasizing what Karen already said, that contacting the ACRL office through Karen or Kara is really um, a first step to just even understand what, what they might do to help you in your organization. There are lots of different um, angles on how to help an organization and how to um, work uh, through issues, whether it's change management or planning or or more developmental things, um, as we've been describing. Uh, the first the first thing is to have a conversation with with them, and and you'll see um, what I've been talking about in terms of the collaborative approach, and and also just clarifying. Sometimes we talk to people. Um, Karen and I have talked to people, or Karen and I have talked to people, and we clarify their need, and their need ends up being completely different than what we might provide, but sometimes it clarifies for the client um, exactly what it is that they're asking for, just even one conversation. Right, and um, and it it we've also sometimes along the lines of what Catherine has said is it might not be that our consulting services are what would be best, or it might be much more professional development, which is a different arm of ACRL. Uh, it may be as, for example, with the example of space planning, uh, there's, it, it may be something that we really don't have the in-depth kind of uh, focus in that particular area. But we're always happy to have chat you know, talk yes. things through with you, figure out what you really need. And, and if it's not us, we can try to point you in some other directions that are more fruitful because, you know, we're just very committed to helping the academic library community um, move forward and, and be successful. Right. Okay. Uh, I do want to take a moment and thank uh, Catherine and April, Lydia and Juliet for joining in today and uh, providing uh, talking about their experiences uh, because it really is uh, the not only the obviously the consultants we're working with who are working with academic libraries but it's ultimately the academic libraries and the work that they are all doing so to hear that perspective and to get a better understanding of how libraries are moving forward um, is important for us to to know about as well so thank you
And I think, Elois, we will um, go ahead and end the webcast. Thank you, Elois, for making sure we knew what we were doing. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.